Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. I don't care what your conscience tells you to do. Charles, my darling, you've come much too far to play the role of the loving husband. Look, I never claimed to be the perfect husband. Here you are. Here you are with lime. Do it with soda. Thanks. Just put it on my tab, okay? All right, I'll check on you in a bit. Look, I'm not proud of the way I treated Tracy, but I can't leave her. Not with the baby on the way. I just can't throw away my marriage like this. Jesus, we only met a couple of weeks ago. You should have considered that before we started seeing each other. I never meant to hurt anybody. Hell, I wasn't thinking at all. It's just hard when you're starting out. The pressures of work and, and then when she told me about the pregnancy. I guess I just felt like I needed something. So, you're going back to that. When I can offer you so much more. I'm not saying that you aren't a beautiful woman. God, you're probably the most exciting woman I've ever met. But I owe it to Tracy. I've got to try to make this marriage work. After all, she's my wife. But it's me and Mark, isn't it, Charles? Don't make this any harder on me. I've made up my mind. Oh, have you? It all works out rather nicely for you, doesn't it? I just vanish into the night and you go back to your sweet little wife. Did you stop to consider me and your plans? Be reasonable. You have to understand. Understand? Then. I guess that's it then. I was afraid this would happen. Really, it's for the best. You'd never be happy with me anyway. Charles, if we're to have only one last night together, let's go somewhere where we can be alone. There are some areas of the human mind, and indeed of the world we live in, that were never meant for investigation. There are always those who delve into the darker worlds of knowledge, and many pay with their sanity for their interests. Some of these unfortunates are taken in by the Hayward Foundation, an organization that studies paranormal experiences and their effects on humanity. It is cases such as these that are sent to a restored mansion in a small coastal town in Maine a center for the care and study of the insane. Since the 1920s, this place has been known as the Hayward Sanitarium. Come in. Ah, Gordon. Well, I'm sorry to bother you, Atwater, but there's a new twist to the Casador case. It's right up your alley, so I thought I'd ask your advice. That would be Maria Casador, right? Yes, the, um, Vermont vampire. Ah, yes. I, I believe you remember the newspaper stories. Yes, the tabloids had a field day with it. Sexy bloodsucker kills dozens. The Foundation really had to work to get her here. Every institution in the country wanted a chance to observe such an unusual patient. Well, she shows none of the symptoms that accompany this form of delusion. Mm. Also, the framework of the delusion itself is very complex. She has abandoned the traditional supernatural explanation of vampirism in favor of a scientific rationale. Hmm. You mentioned a new twist? Yes, yes. It's, it's a relatively new development in the case, Richard. Two weeks ago, the patient began having odd dreams. So I put her on the EEG. Her brain waves showed some unusual patterns. I showed them to Dr. McLeod. And what did he say? He's never seen anything like them. Here, look for yourself. I haven't either. The right brain activity is almost overwhelming in comparison to the left. Almost as if the one side is dormant. Uh, tell me, did you double-check for equipment malfunction? Yes. The diagnostics showed all systems were functioning within normal parameters. Hmm. Does she remember the dreams themselves? Well, she claims not to, and she won't allow me to hypnotize her. I wondered if you knew of a way to get her to open up. Well, there's something I used once before... But I'd have to conduct the interview myself. Is that a problem with you, Gordon? Oh, no, of course not. I, I think you'll find her quite fascinating. <laughs> Actually, she's so sophisticated, sometimes I almost believe her myself. She must be quite persuasive to sway a skeptic like you, Gordon. Now I'll have to watch myself. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll be in the observation room doing it for you. Hmm. 
Come in. Hi, guys. I'm not interrupting anything, am I? No, I just dropped in to get Richard's advice on something. Are you all set for your trip to Newfoundland, Halley? Yeah, I'm on the way out the door. I came to say goodbye to you two. No, I knew you were leaving soon, but I didn't realize you were going this morning. It's at least a nine-hour drive to Cape Tormentine. I want to get there as early in the evening as I can. Well, is the rest of your team already there? Yes, they got there on Friday to start setting up the equipment. Well, how long do you expect it to take? No more than a couple of weeks, I hope, though you never know what we might dig up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Richard, I was wondering what you're doing with Dermot. Well, he's not nearly as violent as he was the first time I talked with him. In fact, I'm thinking about decreasing his medication. Progress is slow, but I think he's starting to trust me a bit more. Are you sure that's a good idea, Richard? Dr. Chandler seems to think that he's completely unstable without large doses of levelance. Well, I agree that O'Brien is unstable, but I believe it's no longer necessary to keep him on such massive doses. I've conferred with Dr. McLeod, and he says it's worth a try. I'll leave you two to talk shop. Right. i got to get going. See you later. Well, I should get busy as well. Rounds to make, you know. Goodbye, Hallie. Bye, Hallie. Have a good trip. Uh, about the Casador case, Gordon, I've got some free time this afternoon, if that's convenient. Well, it's all right for me, but I'm afraid it won't do. Well, why not? Well, we have to wait for the patient to wake up, old man. Vampires don't rise till the sun goes down. <laughs> See you tonight. Dinner time. Hi. Hi, Emily. You're running a little late tonight, aren't you? Yeah, things are a little crazy on one of the other wards. We had to do a shakedown and restraint in the West Hall. Uh, <laughs> that's to be expected, I guess. You know, things are a little bit more wild when the uh, moon is full. <laughs> yeah, we better hurry up and get the food out. I imagine you can take it from here. I'll be back for the cart when I come down to make the medication round. Okay. Oh, by the way, you need to unlock the one-way room for a session. Dr. Fox and Dr. Atwater will need it. Oh. Is that possible, Rama? Oh, sure, I, I guess. They'll be working with the girl in 26. It, 26? I wasn't notified about it, but... Um, they set it up this afternoon. It's all okay. All right. I'll see to it. We'll have the trays ready when you get back. Okay, bye, guys. Bye, bye Emily. All right, I'll do odd numbers. Oh, wait a minute. I took the tray to her last time. Uh, are, you your turn. are you two still scared of going to the end of the hall? She doesn't bite, you know. What? Are you kidding? She's locked up. What are you worried about? Look, she gives me the creeps, man. I did it last time. It's, it's his turn. Uh, if you're going to be that way, I'll take her tray down. Jesus, you think she was Count Dracula or something? She is she she's spooky. No Good evening, Robert. Uh, good evening. Here's your dinner, ma'am. No, thank you. I'm not hungry tonight. Oh, you really should try and eat something, miss. You haven't had anything to eat in four days. Don't waste your time worrying about me. I'm just fine. Well, I'll just leave this here in case you change your mind. Mm. I'll be back in a bit. Dr. Fox should be in to see you soon. Thank you, Robert. You really are a sweet boy. <laughs> Be a dear and turn out that hall light, will you? You know how sensitive my eyes are. Yeah, sure. I'll be monitoring everything from out here, Richard. I'm quite anxious to see the method you described. It sounds most intriguing. Supposedly, she hasn't eaten in nearly four days, yet she maintains excellent health. I suspect the orderlies aren't checking her trays closely enough, and she's sneaking food. Hmm, interesting. Perhaps she's projecting the vampire image by abhorring normal sustenance. Oh, that's what I would think. She goes to any length necessary to make her delusions appear as real to those around her as they are to herself. It's amazing how complicated the whole fantasy is. Does she show any sign of split personalities? Well, you'd expect that, wouldn't you? But it's very strange. It's as if she's lost her own identity in making the alternate self so complete. Her vampire persona has total control of her psyche at all times. The self who perpetuates the fantasy is unrecognized completely ignored by the conscious mind. So she would be unaware of such actions as, say, concealing the fact that she's eating, to make other people believe in her fantasy. 
She does these things in a kind of sleepwalking mode. Is that what you're suggesting? The only other possibility is that she is aware of all her actions, and her ability to lie is beyond the depths to which normal analysis can delve. Hmm. Of course, there is another case scenario. What's that? Something I overlooked. Well, she could be telling the truth, Richard. She could actually be a vampire. <laughs> But seriously, she can catch you quite off guard. Don't let her deceive you. Her cruelty knows no bounds. Her last internment was at the Willard Hospital in Baltimore. She convinced them of her sanity, and then after they released her, she ruthlessly slayed well over twenty individuals. She could be the most dangerous patient to be ever held here. Show extreme caution. Miss Cassidor, I'm Richard Atwater. Doctor Fox thought it might be a good idea if you and I got to know each other. Would that be all right with you? Isn't that just lovely of Doctor Fox to think of me? I'm delighted to make your acquaintance, Richard. Are you a psychiatrist also? I've never thought of Gordon as one to arrange blind dates. Well, I am a doctor. I've been asked by Doctor Fox to look into some of the strange points in your case. Strange. Come now, darling. Let's not mince words.、Uh, to be honest, Miss Cassidor, I would like to examine some of the physical manifestations of your case, sleeping only by day, for instance, or your lack of appetite. Doctor Fox is beginning to believe that there may be a pathological basis for some of your problems. So I'm diseased now, Doctor. Careful, it might be catching. That's not precisely what I meant, Miss Cassidor. Maria. What I mean, Maria, is that your vampirism may have a medical as well as a psychological basis. Many doctors think that the vampire legend was actually based on people who suffer from a disease called porphyria. Yes, some of the symptoms are bloodshot, light-sensitive eyes, and highly photoallergenic skin. That's not what I have. Doctor, tell me, are you married? I'm a widower, actually. I'm so sorry. Do go on, please. Excuse my interruption. <clears throat> yes. Well,、uh, in any event,、uh, we would like to explore all the possibilities so that we can help you. All the possibilities, Doctor. That sounds alluring. Are you sure my delusion, as you call it, might not be some form of sexual aberration? Perhaps I am like. A black widow spider killing my mate. <clears throat> that sounds a little too Freudian for me. We know you don't have porphyria, but you may have a disease that hasn't been identified yet. Oh, do you think they'll name it after me? Perhaps they'll call it anemia casadoria. <laughs> have you found anyone yet to fill the void left by your late wife? It's a shame. People are so lonely. I get very lonely myself sometimes.、Uh, I'd like to look at your eyes this evening. Oh, doctor, we've just met. No, I meant that I would like to examine them for、uh, sensitivity. Oh, I don't think you'll ever meet anyone quite as sensitive as me, Richard.、Uh, this is just a simple test for light sensitivity of the retina. Would you mind、uh, focusing on this light? Anything you say. Excellent.、Uh, I'll be giving you some instructions while you gaze at the light, so please stay quiet and relax. I promise this won't take very long. Is the light too bright? Yes. And now? Still too bright. How's this? That's better, but it's still a little uncomfortable. Now? Fine. Now, every once in a while, you'll see a different colored light flash. I want you to tell me what color it is when you see it. All right. Let's begin. Blue. Green. Yellow. Green. Blue. Blue. <sighs> Violet. Green. Blue, violet, yellow, blue, 
No. Maria, you're quite relaxed now, aren't you? Yes. I'm going to count backwards from ten to one now, and when I reach one, you will be completely relaxed and aware only of the sound of my voice. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Maria? Yes? Why don't you tell me about your dreams? Not dreams. Conversations. Conversations with who? With the Dark Father. Who is he? He is the first of us, and he will be the last of us. What does he say to you? He commands me. I have called to you, my child, and you have answered. You are a loyal daughter. I am a loyal daughter. What do you wish of me? A small thing. I wish you to kill a mortal man. He has stumbled upon knowledge that I do not wish revealed. If this information reaches the world of mortis, it might endanger many of our brothers and sisters. Who is this man that I will slay? You have but to give me his name. His name is Charles Stockton. He is an agent of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. How am I to escape from this place? They will hunt for me if they find I have disappeared. It is already taken care of. No one will know that you have left. If I succeed, Will I be free of this place permanently? Be patient, daughter. In time, you will be released. Yes, father. All will be done as you say. So, did you find this man and kill him? Of course. You had no problem leaving the hospital and finding him. The walls could not hold me. Tell me how you found and killed this person. He was easy to locate. I finally met him in a nightclub. He had fought with his wife earlier that evening and had left his house in anger. His thoughts were dark and easily turned. Such a simple man. You killed him that same night? No. The perfect opportunity had yet to present itself. And he seemed amusing. I decided I couldn't resist having some fun with the dear man. Each night, I left the cell. He would meet me. He could not control himself. He could not resist. For weeks, I possessed him completely. His every thought, his every breath. Then, events turned, and I had to draw the game to a close. I was afraid this would happen. Really, it's for the best. You'd never be happy with me anyway. Charles, if we're to have only one last night together, let's go somewhere where we can be alone. I don't know if that's such a good idea, Maria. I can't keep lying to Tracy. I told her that I just had to check out some things at the office. I should get back. You won't have to worry about her, my darling. I'm certain of that. Settle the check and let's go. I don't know why we had to come all the way out here. It'll take forever to get back. Our last night together has to be special love. And the place has to be perfect. The stars. The delicious night air. Drink it in, Charles. Feel it caress you like a loving hand. Do you want me to put on some music? Of course not, darling. It will drown out the music all around us. 
The night has its own melody, but few ever hear it. You have to be part of the darkness to truly appreciate it. Part of the night? Maria, you have such an imagination. It's a wonder you aren't an actress or something. Oh, then I am an actress, Charles. A very good one. Oh, really? Yes. You see, Charles, every time I'm with you, I pretend that I'm human. <laughs> oh, that's rich, Maria. <laughs> I'm not joking, Charles. I've never been more serious. I'm a vampire. <laughs> oh, give me a break, Maria. I suppose you, you took me out here to, to bite my neck and, and drink my blood. How did you ever guess, you clever man? Mm, well, why don't you come a little closer, Count Dracula? All right. Damn it! You did it! I don't believe it! I'm bleeding! Are you crazy? Sanity is merely a matter of perspective, Charles. Oh, God, look at this. I'm bleeding everywhere. Over my shirt. I'm not going to explain this. What were you thinking? Some kind of kinky game? Or is it just your jealousy? You aren't listening to me, darling. I'm afraid that you men just never learn. It's time, Charles. Time for you to die. Oh, you're you're crazy. <laughs> That's it. Oh, can't you see that I have to go back to Tracy? Oh. I didn't want to hurt you, Maria. You know, I, I'm sorry it had to be this way, but I just don't love you. You mortals in your love. Stupid man, I never loved you. I'm just a little girl, still playing with my food. Now come closer, darling. Let me kiss you again. Oh, no. Get the hell away from me. Charles, don't be difficult. I borrowed your gun without asking. I hope you don't mind, my dear. Well, we can't have you running out on me now. And you did take the keys with you. God, why are you doing this to me? Oh, Tracy. Tracy, you've got to be joking. Do you still believe that I'm doing this because our affair is over? <laughs> oh, quite frankly, Charles, I couldn't care less. After all, do you get emotional over a burger and fries? <laughs> of course you don't. Your paltry male Evo just can't accept the fact that I can be so indifferent to your charm. Maybe this will help. My last name is not Perez. It's Casador. Casador? They put you in an in asylum. It's a charming little place in Maine, actually. All the doctors there are quite taken with me. And I can leave whenever I want to. Locks can't hold me, special agent Stockton. I must say... I don't see what they think is so special about you. You seem like such a small, insignificant man. Oh, why you picked me? Because I work for the Bureau? It wasn't my decision. Actually, I can't tell you how hard it was to resist finding more challenging prey. But orders are orders, and I was told that you know too much about a certain corporation. Oh, Moral Industries. What do you care about that? I might say it's a family matter. I have to ask you one more thing, Charles. What? Will you hate me in the morning? Say no! Well, I guess you won't be around in the morning. Which do you like better, a funeral, Charles? Lilies or white roses? Oh, do me still. You'll ruin my new dress. Shame I had to shoot you. What a waste of good blood. So you drank his blood? Yes. What did you do with the corpse and the car? I left the body there and drove the car to a place more convenient for my return to the sanitarium. And this is the reason behind your lack of appetite. 
because you just fed? Yes. How long ago was it that you killed him? Four nights past. Will Stockton become a vampire now? No. There was no mingling of my blood with his. Have you heard from the Dark Father since you killed him? He will call again when he has use for me. Have you left your room since? No, not yet. When will you need to feed again? When I feel the thirst. Now, Maria, I am going to count backwards from ten to one. When I reach one, you will awaken, and you will be unaware of our conversation. You will remember only that you had an eye test. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. <laughs> Yes. Good morning. I just wanted to tell you again how impressed I was with that hypnotic technique you used on Maria. It's interesting, isn't it? I learned it from a professor of mine in Oxford. He was quite an innovator. I hope her story will be helpful. It's a fascinating delusion. Absolutely fascinating. She truly believes that she could leave here and drink human blood. By the by, I asked Robert if she ever had disappeared from herself, just to be certain. What did he say? He looked at me as if I were mad myself. <laughs> I did some research on her case last night after the session. Something she had said struck a chord in my memory. Really? What was it? It took quite a while to find it, mostly because I was looking in the wrong file. The information was in someone else's file? Whose? Dermot's. Dermot O'Brien's? I didn't know of any connection between Maria and Dermot. Though there isn't, really. But they do have one thing in common. Both files make mention of Charles Stockton. Dermot mentioned him as a contact during one of our sessions. Oh, well, that's an odd sort of coincidence. Yes. Yes, it is. You have been committed to Hayward Sanitarium. Written, directed, and produced by Matthew Bocco and David Johnson. Executive producers Tom Holicky and Tony Brewer. Sound design by John Weber. Engineering and Foley team led by John Weber and Richard Fish, including Tim Arnett, Dan McDevitt, Doug Black, John Young, and Dan Zadroga. Featuring Mike Kelleher, Diane Condrat, Andrew Peloso, Alexandra Aufterheide, Richard Fish, Mark Shad, Tom Holicky, Lara Britton, David Johnson, Tim Arnett, Victoria Johnson, Matthew Bocco, Eric Rosser and Mark Federson, and Ginger the Dog. Studio facilities provided by Lodestone Productions and Razor Digital. Hayward Sanitarium is made possible by grants from Lodestone Productions and Razor Digital and the generosity of its cast and crew. Copyright 1992. Hayward Sanitarium is a last-minute production.